I received this game for free. Imagine putting on a VR headset just to look at a flat screen and play an old arcade style game. 1976 Back to Midway takes the player back to the old days and it goes one step further by allowing the player in the cockpit as well. Its simple gameplay is easy for anyone to pick up and play. You can use a standard controller or a VR controller by either using the thumbstick or the motion controls like a joystick. You'll play as a pilot from the future in your stationary cockpit, controlling a plane fighting Nazis in World War II with the narration of a wacky mad scientist between missions. The guy is actually really funny and he makes constant cultural and historical references. Toilets around the bottle now include built-in virtual reality headsets. The story discusses many popular battles fought in World War II, but the game doesn't do a great job of conveying this. The setting of each level seems to be over crystal blue water, which is an irrelevant environment to most of the battles mentioned in the story. This is a fairly insignificant detail being that it's obviously an arcade game, though more variety in the environments would have made the experience so much better overall. The majority of the gameplay is in a top-down shoot-em-up that most gamers born in the 80s and 90s are familiar with, but each level contains sort of side missions called immersion zones. These place the player in the cockpit for a more intimate experience, but the plane is still locked in a general forward trajectory. I thought the immersion zones were great for breaking up the repetition of the rest of the game. Each enemy you destroy drops coins which you can collect to purchase upgrades for your plane. The upgrades are nothing crazy, just extra guns and firepower, but they're essential to your progress. Each mission along your journey contains 5 stars, provided by completing generic objectives, like kill X amount of enemies. Segments of the journey are blocked behind a gate, only unlocked by acquiring the necessary amount of stars, so you'll likely be playing some missions more than once in order to complete their objectives and get their stars. This is a great way to add more length to the game, and I don't mind replaying some missions. The only downside is that most missions are nearly identical aside from their designated enemy placements, so the gameplay is somewhat repetitive and grindy. I think the graphics look great, though some of the projectiles can be difficult to see, being that everything is so bright and vibrant. This can make survival quite unlikely, especially being that some projectiles seem nearly impossible to avoid. However, you can't fail a mission, and each death comes with a respawn at the expense of a few coins. Overall, it's a fun game that will probably take around 3 hours to complete, which is a bit short, but it's the kind of game that I would like to hop into from time to time for some quick arcade fun. You can find 1976 Back to Midway on Steam, and I give it a rating of... It seems like a good year. Let me take a look at the computer and see how things are out there. Oof. Oh, my God. I'm afraid we're going to need a couple of surgical masks.